Thank you very much. Okay, so thanks a lot. So we'll continue with my, um, let me see if I can share my screen. You guys see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so I, I will I will talk about the part of sharing your data through FaceSpace. So basically, how do you go from submitting this uh, new data uh, submission form that Laura briefly spoke about, all the way to the time you log in and create your new data set, and then we'll go through a kind of short demo where I. I will try to actually, in a few minutes, create a new data set and upload the data and go through sort of a, a quick version of what you will, it will take for you to upload a specific type of data. So um, let me just summarize, talk a little bit about this, uh, the main steps, and then I will show all these on our website so that you can actually see it. So the first thing, the first step, uh, basically, the if you are going to submit data, the place where everything starts is by submitting what we call the uh, data submission form. Okay, so this is you go to our website. I will actually talk you back and forth right now so that uh, it's clearer. Um, hold on. Um, so basically, you start always in our um, homepage. You go to contribute, submitting your data. And here, right here, you have this click here to fill out the data submission form. And this data submission form is has it's very, you know, few minutes, your very basic information, your full name, your email, your institution, some descri description of your data, you know, this type of data, uh, type of experiment and you know, some high level, it doesn't have to be very detailed. The approximate size, if you know it, you know, how many terabytes or gigabytes is kind of the order of money too. We don't, we don't need any, and at this point, we don't need any precise uh, size of your data set, just estimates. What is interest, important for us to know whether it contains uh, data from humans or from animal subjects, and then the grant number, the title of your project, the list of principal investigators, and some abstract about your research. Then once you submit this form, uh, this basically, let me switch back to the PowerPoint. So once you submit this uh, form, this gets to us, we review it at the the face-based team and the NIDCR reviews it. And once uh, we say, yeah, this is data that uh, matches our criteria, we're interested in that data, so we'll contact you and basically create your project. And at that point, what we do is we, we create a, we, we use Globus as an authentication uh, platform. So we'll create a specific group for your project that will allow you to control the access to your data. I will show this again, but I want to talk about this over and over. Every aspect of the data in Facebook is basically the, the access is controlled. You always have a full control on your data and nothing gets published or seen by the public until you say, okay, I'm ready to release this data. You can make it public. Before that, you and the people that are in this access control group are the only ones that can see and modify your data. I mean, the people that can only modify your data is always you, no? no even when you make your data public, data can never be changed or modified by anyone by, but you. Anyways, so basically what happens is that at this point, let me just show you something, you will, once you get approve or basically once you when we say yeah we want to uh, set up your project you basically get an email that this is kind of like a, a mock-up of that email where it says you know you're the new contributor we uh, created your new project this is a doy for your project 
you need to be added to this uh, Globus group in order to access your project. We tell you what are the steps that you have to go through. You can uh, um, you can enter your you can do it using your institution ID, institutional ID, or you can create your Globus ID if you prefer that. And then once you log in, you can access the once you're part of that group, we you you can access your your basically your project. And then very important for us at this point too is that in that email we said that we would like to set up a one hour call with you where we go and we repeat some of these steps and we uh, show you how to create this data data set and how to access. So once we go through all that, you find your new project. I will show you all this. You navigate to add a record and then you start creating your data sets. Uh, something that we mentioned, but I will say it again, is that, uh, oops, I don't know what happened, is that all the, everything I'm gonna show is, uh, most of it, it's a little bit different when you are doing human subject data, because human subject data is treated differently because uh, that we mentioned before, it needs, basically goes to a separate dedicated server. We don't put the human subject data available in our catalog, or we don't upload it to our normal catalog. So uh, something we need to be very careful is that the, if you are submitting human subject data, then we go through a different type of uh, tutorial, and we show you how to transfer that data to our dedicated uh, server and you know we need to make sure that no human subject data gets published to or uploaded to our sort of uh, public site so with that uh, i will try to now um, go through a demo so i will try to show you how i can create a data set that let's say I, I picked this type of experiment. So let's say we've done, let's assume we've done fluorescence microscopy experiments on three identical mutant mouse at the E14.5 stage. Then let's say I have my anatomy or the part of the mouse that I image is the root of the molar tooth. The, these are genotype with, with LHX6 minus minus. So the phenotype that we try to study, let's say, was the abnormal molar root morphology. The gene that we're targeting is the LHX6. So maybe the data I'm going to show you doesn't make specific sense for this, but let's say I assume this is what I want to show, and I want to show you how you can, in a few minutes, create a data set if you were having something like this. So let me go back to uh, face base. I will make my screen a little bit bigger uh, so that anyone can see it better. Okay. Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, so before we start, I want to go back to our um, key concept graph that uh, it's always handy so that we cannot have in our mind our data model, the main elements. I think Rob already explained this, went through this, but I want to go very quickly through this so that I can show you where I'm going. So like, like we said, the, our top element is the project, which is basically details at the, at the human group and the grant. So this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to go to my project. Then I will create a data set. I will add some data. And then if the data is a structure and you have all the biological details, you can start creating details about all your biosamples, creating details about your experiments, add the protocols for that experiment, and then you will create this sort of replicate element to add your data. So let me say how I do that. So I will start by going to my project. So I will go to in our homepage, I will go to data, project, and I will try to find my project. Okay. I will, for this, I will use a project 
that is called face-based demo. Face-based demo. Okay, so I try to look for that process in a facet. I see no results. And the reason why I don't see any result is because this is not a public project yet and I'm not logged in. So if I want to access that project, and that's probably what, ha what will happen when you are a new contributor, we will create your project, but only you and people in your group at that point will have access to your project because the data has not been released yet, so it's not public. So in order, if I want to see or find my project, I need to log in. So we click login. I log in with a Globus ID. I will use one of my uh, uh, aliases IDs and now if I go if I do that again if I look again for the face based demo project oh, I see now that I can find it so I will go to that project so this is again a demo project so it doesn't really have any uh, real information but once you get to your project, everything, all the details like the abstract, the title, the PIs, and other project members, everything that you submit in that data submission form, we will pre-populate your project with that information. That doesn't mean that you cannot change that information. Once you're in here, you can click your edit button in here and you can make any changes. So. The, one of the main difference between FaceBase and all the other uh, sort of data repositories that we know of is that we call it this like self-curated uh, system. So at any point in pretty much any element, you can make changes yourself. You, you, are, you can go and do edit and change all the information and review the information and make the information more accurate if you want. Okay, so I will start so once we go, you go through your project, you, you know, you can add new project members, you can change your PI information, publications, anyways. Anyway, so I will now try to create a new data set with all characteristics that I mentioned before. So I, the first thing I'm going to go now, first I have access to my project, I will go to the data sets and I click add records. And this takes me to the form to create a new data set. In this form, the main two fields are the title and the description. So the title is something that can be very informative, like you, when you enter the title for a, for a paper or any kind of publication, you enter something that will, that's meaningful to what you're saying. So let's say in this case, I will put something like fluor, fluorescent, Uh, microscopy of E14.5 mutant, uh, okay, let's start, LHX6 mutant mouse, mice, something like this. And then in the description, I will say in this data set, we present data for three identical, identical eyes of E14.5, blah, blah, blah. We also have, we also provide, a, you know, here, etc., etc., etc. But we want to to enter this and be as descriptive as possible, so that someone comes to see to this data set and understand what has been done and what's contained in this data set. What type of data do we have? You know, the all those details. Be as descriptive as possible. A study design. We can sometimes we like if you have a data set that shows many different type of of data sometimes we ask you to elaborate a little bit here if it's like a, a data set where you only have one type of data most of this study design information is going to be in what we call the protocol i'm going to show you later so sometimes you don't need to specify that and then 
if you are if you are uploading is the data you're uploading contains data subjects then we ask you to change this from no to yes and then you also get to select if you want to mint a DOI at this point when you create a data set or not. I mean, most of the time you say yes, so there's no reason to say no. And then the next two fields are basically only administrators like us can change this. So this says whether the data set has been released or not and the date of release. Typically, you as a data contributor will not have access to do to change this field. So the way it works is that when you're done with this, you let us know, we review it, the data set with you, and when we're all happy, we either embargo it if you're not ready to release the data, or we release it and the data becomes public. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to click Save, and this has basically created or entered a new record, a new uh, data set record in our catalog. As you can see, the first field here is identifiers. We have a record ID and accession, which is kind of like a, a legacy concept. And then right here, right now you don't see it because we typically have a process that runs Kicksoft after a little bit, we create a DOI. So if you come back to this record later, right here in your first line next to accession, you will see a DOI. And that's gonna be the DOI that we've been talking about all day that's the identifier that will be persistent and you can use anywhere you want to ref reference this data. Okay, so I will go through the list of what we call these high level metadata fields. And then we'll go through the process of actually uploading the data. So the first data, the first field here you say contributors. This is a field that basically any person that's already any PI or project member that has that is present in the project. You see here we said the face-based demo project, but in your case it's gonna be a specific project. Although everyone in there will automatically get be populated in here, but if you had some additional uh, scientists that contributed in this specific data set but it's not part of the project, then you can go here, click add records, and you select or enter a new uh, person record. Then publications, there's something very important. We want to typically, whenever possible, we want to tie the data to the publication that the, this data is present. So if, this, if the data has already been published or is already part of a publication, you click add records in here and you enter the PubMed ID and click save and then now you navigate back to my data set tab. I will be closing this um, tabs as I go down to, my, to avoid confusion. Anyways, I'm back now into my uh, data set tab and I see that the PubMed ID is there. So if anyone clicks there, it will directly take them to that publication. The next field is the protocols something we try to put as much emphasis as possible. Right now here, you don't have to fill in anything. You don't have to add the protocol in here now because we will ask you to add the protocols later to the experiment. And once you add the protocol to experiment, it will automatically be listed in here. The next field is the related data sets. And this is here where you can make connections between your data to some external source like DBGAP or GEO or any other play, repository or place where you may have data that is related to this data set. Or you can establish a relationship between face based data sets. Like if you have, let's say, this is the type, the data you did for E14.5, but then you would create another data set for E17.5, but you feel that these two data sets somehow are connected, then you can establish that connection in here. So, for example, uh, just to give you a feeling here, you go to related data sets, you go click add record. Let's say that this is a, there is a geo data set, GSE geo data set that is related to this data. Here you enter the, you know, the, the data set and that will directly point to that. Uh, Geo data set. 
protect the human subject, we also already say no for this specific data set because it's mouse, but if it were a, a human subject data set, it was very important to put yes in here. If, if this were a human subject data set, we will ask you to enter here at the data use limitation. This is something that you, when we talk to you about uh, uploading or, uh, you know, submitting uh, human data, we will ask you about your institutional certification and institutional data that will contain the data use limitation. So we will discuss about that. The next uh, type of, the next fields are basically the metadata fields, what we call the high level metadata fields. Many of these fields are also present or can come directly from the actual experiment or the biosample when we populate them. But we you also give you the opportunity of make them richer in here. Here you can add several uh, uh, of these tags or these uh, metadata terms that will enrich and will allow people to search for your data. So these are all, all the elements that you enter in here is what a user will, I mean, what, what's going to be used for find somebody to find and discover your data. And all these terms, except one, which is the genotype, comes I mean, the, all these terms come from what we call a control vocabulary. So they all come from a list of pre-established terms. We don't, they're not free text. They're not, they're all comes, um, all of them whenever possible and anywhere we have used terms from known and well-established ontologies. Uh, and most of them, those are a list of terms that we control. So if you go and you try to add a term and the term is not there, you need to let us know and we will add that term to the list. To it. We'll add that term to the control vocabulary. In the genotype is one of the ones that you can actually enter yourself, the genotype, because we know the nomenclature can be very complex and they're not well-known ontologies for that. But anyway, so let's assume we'll start describing our data. So I will go to experiment type, click link records. And this interface is always the same for all the records. So I here I have the access to the whole list of terms in our control vocabulary for experiment type. So I will search for uh, fluorescence microscopy and select that term. But, you know, I can be a little bit more descriptive. I say, well, this is also like an imaging assay. So I can, uh, I would like people that are looking for images also find my, my data. So I will add a few more terms. Same thing with the species. I will go to species. I will select mus musculus, mouse. Uh, same thing for phenotype. Gene, I, I will I will add this information um, here, anyways. Um, let's say phenotype. Uh, I will look for abnormal, abnormal molar. You're in you're in gene. Oh, I'm in gene. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I then I'm not gonna look for that. And if I am in gene, I'm going to look for LHX6. Well, gene is a pretty long. We have we have all the genes from the NCBI ontology, so it's a very long list, and it takes a while until sometimes until you find the specific record. So I would select this one. I could select more than one in here. Okay, if I want. Um, stage, uh, okay, stage, uh, I will select 14.5, E14.5. <clears throat> and so on. So let me clear these things. So I can continue adding as much information as I want. Let's say I will click anatomy. Uh, it's going to be a root of molar 
truth. And as you see here, we have uh, we have all the terms from the Uberon ontology, which is one of the most comprehensive anatomical uh, ontologies. So you can search, and again, in here you can add more. You know, let's say uh, this is also part of the mandible, if I want. Maybe not, but just uh, just for example. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's not accurate, but I will select this. I can show you that you can add more than one term in here. And you can go through that anyways. So you can continue adding as much information as you want. Genotype, I will add uh, LHX6 uh, minus minus, and so on. So I. I add as much information as possible. And then let's say if you if you were to have some, uh, that, now we get to the point where we want to start adding data to the data set. So one, one, one uh, sort of minimal way of doing it would be, let's say if you have data that you don't have a lot of uh, uh, biological information about it, or you don't have or that data doesn't really matches uh, the, 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 the data model very well in the way you can describe it, you can, for example, go to our section that is called um, supplementary files. And at this point, uh, you basically select a file from your computer. You go here, select file. And uh, let's say, I select one file, you know, let's say I have zip, it's a number of elements that that's pretty much what I have. I don't have another way of describing the data. So I will click save and I am uploading my data. directly uploading data from your browser. You know, you don't have to do anything fancy. And I navigate back to my data set. And at this point, you know, in many cases, this might constitute a, a valid face-to-face data set that we've done probably in 15 minutes. I wanna show you that here you have, we provide this button here, hide empty sections, that basically clears all the clutter and allows you to see what you have already entered. So in many cases, for example, in, in when we when when people submit when users submit human data, there's a lot of the uh, information about the bio samples and experiments and things like that that are not easy to describe, and also we cannot make it available for download. So in many cases, most of what you enter is basically the you end you create this page, you end, you create this entrance in our catalog. Uh, add some of the metadata information so that it can be discovered, but then the data itself is going to be transferred uh, through a different mechanism. And many times, many cases, you're done at this point. Okay. So, however, let me show you how the normal procedure, the more specific procedure, is when you have data, when you have all the more biological information about your exper experiment or your data, like in this case, I know everything about my bio samples. I know everything about my experiment. So I will try to be more descriptive and add that information so that it's, so that the bio sample, so that the data set is much richer. 